Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I want to talk about what I, based on the footage that we saw in yesterday's trailer video for Kingdom Hearts Missing Link, so the mobile game, all right? Um, I want to talk about what I, just from the small snippets that we saw, you can already kind of infer and figure out about how the gameplay is going to be. And I mean beyond just like the graphics and whatnot. I'm talking about so, so far as to like, where, what are the actual type of uh, missions and whatnot that we're gonna end up doing, um, especially how the monetization is likely going to be, okay? Because we already kind of, they didn't explicitly tell us the monetization, but you know, if you played a, if you played a mobile to, a mobile game or two before, uh, especially Union Cross, which I feel like it's going to be having a heavy, massive influence on how this game is probably going to play, and then chances are you might have picked up on it too. If you watched my reaction trailer, or yeah, my, my reaction video to the trailer uh, yesterday, you probably already have heard me say a couple things as to what they're probably going to say. So, but without further ado, I wanted to go more in depth about it. And I also want to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on the matter. Um, uh, because to, to be just, to just be blunt. Okay. If this game plays and it goes down the route that I think it is based on like, the 30 seconds that we saw of footage that we saw for the game, I have a strong feeling that it's just, it's gonna, it's not gonna do well. Um, it's basically just gonna go down the same rabbit hole that Union Cross did, where the game is just not satisfying to play because Square Enix is too money, money hungry, okay? They're too cash grabby. They're not trying to actually, you know, provide a satisfying mobile game for people to play that keeps people around to actually want to spend money. Instead, they just monetize it out of the butthole. So, and they do the bare minimum required to actually appease people. Um, so, and just, it's a crack, basically a cash grab, okay? Um, I'm hoping it doesn't go down, down that route. What I'm hoping, um, obviously Union Cross is kind of its predecessor, which doesn't paint the greatest picture about it. But so anyways, without further ado, let's just go ahead and kind of go into the theory crafting and whatnot as to what what I think the game's probably going to be, be like. Turns in terms of gameplay as monetization, um, likely things that they're probably going to do and stuff. So anyways, without further ado. Um, so they kind of, to state the obvious, they kind of showed us how the movement was already going to be done in this game. Um, it looks like they're kind of taking notes from a few other mobile games that were on the market uh, where you can kind of move around your character and whatnot because I've seen quite a few games, mobile games that are like this uh, before in the past. Um, and obviously, it, it, it's kind of interesting because they seem to be able to move around across many multiple different types of worlds all right which you know shouldn't be surprising it's kingdom hearts um but it's more so the fact that like you know the the entire cinematic trailer at the beginning is basically showing like scala ad kylum all right okay like they're showing scala ad kylum over here but then like they jump in this first snippet there's like skyscrapers and, and buildings and whatnot like this this isn't in scala this is clearly not scala ad kylum so i don't know where this is is this san francisco tokyo i don't know all right this is clearly somewhere different um with that being said they did show us uh being able to play within where is it what's it called K kingdom of corona I think that's what it's called, the Tangled World, right? This is clearly the Tangled World, all right? It looks like they're grabbing assets from, like, the Kingdom Hearts 3 game, and they're kind of just importing it into the mobile game. That's the vibe I'm getting. So, more likely than not, we'll probably be able to visit each and every world that you played in in Kingdom Hearts 3. Let me move this out of the way. Um, in Kingdom Hearts 3, 
just with watered down graphics. Now, with that being said, at first I'm like, how are they going to do that for a mobile game? That's a, that's like, these worlds are big. Okay. Um, but then it struck me. Okay. Like if you go back, if we look back, there's actually a small frame where it shows it. Okay. So there's a little bit here, right here. Okay. It might be a little bit hard for you guys to see. Maybe I'll zoom in when I do the edit or something. Okay. Let me, there it is. All right. While, while he's running up the wall. Okay. There's this area. I'll use a little marker. Okay. Okay. This is area right here. Okay. What looks like, like a giant circle as part of like the perimeter of a giant circle, which leads me to believe that the way that you're going to be like navigating the worlds in this game is that you're basically going to be getting certain sections of each world that you can move around in. You're not going to be able to travel the entire world. You're probably going to be just traveling in just small sections of it. Think of it almost akin to how you would move around in different areas in Kingdom Hearts 1, where you kind of had to like phase through an invisible wall to kind of like transition to the next area. Think of it more like that. That's what I'm assuming these areas are kind of going to be like, which makes sense more sense for a mobile game okay that makes more sense on how they're going to be able to actually like get that working for a mobile game on top of the fact that if it ends up being like union cross where there's like thousands <laughs> of missions because you know it's a mobile game so it's probably going to be grindy um so they they need to be able to reuse assets or uh, or different areas or maybe at least reuse the same world but have different parts of the of that world available um this makes the most sense and how they're probably gonna be able to achieve that where it's just closed off areas and you just navigate, you run around those closed off areas, which leads us into the next section, the missions. <laughs> how are the missions gonna play? Okay, obviously they didn't really show anything about the missions, okay? Now they did show a small section in return and like in terms of like combat and stuff, if I can, uh, if I can find it, okay. So here you see like the character like running around and stuff, um, which I get the vibe when I saw this that like it looks like he's looking for something, okay. Um, which which what does that kind of sound like? It almost sounds akin to some of the missions in Union Cross where you had to like find certain heartless and you had to kill them, or or you had to kill X number of heartlets, like you had to kill twenty heartless total or something before like you you completed the mission sort of deal okay that's the vibe i got when i saw this um okay okay and here we clearly found a heartless okay um and they show the combat a little bit all right so i'm expecting based on this i got the vibe that i'm expecting uh very similar type of missions that we saw in Union Cross, okay? So with that being said, for just kind of a refresher as the type of missions that we had in Union Cross, we obviously had combat type missions where you had to beat, just beat up the Heartless, okay? Simple enough. Um, we had time-based missions. I hated those. Some people liked them. We had them, <laughs> nonetheless. Time-based missions, sometimes it's a mix of both. Sometimes you have to find certain items. Sometimes you have to find certain items with while being a time-based mission. They seem to really like the time-based missions for some reason. It was really annoying. Um, and of course, it'll be of, of varying difficulties in regards to how you fight the, heart, the, the enemies and whatnot. Um, there's a small section of this trailer, if I can find it. Is it here now? Oh, yeah. Okay, so small section of this trailer. So this is like there's section of this trailer where you're like you're clearly fighting like this boss like heartless. Okay, enemy. That's the word I'm looking for. A boss like enemy. All right. Which again is nothing new for Kingdom Hearts game. We kind we had the same thing in Union Cross. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that I don't know if you guys noticed it, but there's clearly what looks like another player playing with you. I, I don't know about you guys, but that's probably one of the main things that kept people around in Union Cross. <laughs> And there wasn't any of that, okay? That was one of the few things that kept people around in playing Union Cross was their, uh, 
was the people in their parties. Okay, um, the people, literally the friends you made along the way. Okay, the, you know the meme. That's basically what it was. Okay, the friends that you made along the way were one of the main reasons reasons as to why people stayed and kept playing the game. To be honest, and I could personally say that myself too. My guild or party, I forget, or whatever you call it. Okay, was one of the few reasons why I stuck to the game, um, just because like they they were just fantastic people. They did such a great job. Uh, even to this day, the fact that I still remember we were one of the top ten. Uh, guilds or parties, whatever it is, uh, in the game during uh, a specific raid week where we could obtain our own union armor. I was one of the only guilds that could obtain that, and I I'm so proud of my team <laughs> to this day. Uh, I still have clips of it. Um, I, I really wish I could be able to boot up the game again just to kind of showcase it because it was it was a proud moment. But the fact that we, it, we clearly have signs of potential teammates that you can play with friends, okay? Maybe even potentially form guilds and parties again like we did in Union Cross. I think that's going to be fantastic because honestly, I would absolutely kill... Because like, for those... For any of you who never really experienced a high-end raid in Union Cross, it takes a lot of coordination, okay? It takes a lot of discipline, too, um, because of the fact that you have to act like your entire team essentially has to be constantly doing it, especially during certain hours of the day uh, when there was, like, double lux hours and stuff like that. Uh, it took a lot of coordination, okay? And there's something... No there's, some there's nothing much more satisfying in a video game than being able to perfectly coordinate with a group of friends or people uh, on a team to be able to accomplish a hard task like uh, the super challenging raid bosses or even competing against other players in the game, okay? There's nothing more satisfying than that. Uh, it's almost like akin to Elden Ring where like it's a really hard game but when you beat it or you beat a certain boss, it feels really satisfying. And it's the same thing uh, for this type of thing. So I'm really happy that it looks like they're bringing back uh, being able to play with other people. Because I think that's probably going to be one of the main things that keep people sticking around. Um, on top of that, what I think is also going to help keep pe people sticking around is the fact that the combat actually looks more fun to play. <laughs> compared to Union Cross. Union Cross had a lot of potential, on it, but they just kind of blew it, to be honest. Um, they, they clearly did not care. They just wanted to do the bare minimum. Um, and that's kind of what killed the game, in my opinion. But this game actually looks like it, it's probably going to be fun. Because uh, it looks like they're pretty much just straight up taking the combat system from Kingdom Hearts 3 and kind of just booting it into a mobile version of it. Which, honestly, I can't complain. Um, and if even better... If they can add controller support to this mobile game, this could easily be a very fun game. Okay, because uh, if you if any of you guys have like one of those like attachable uh, controllers for your for your phone, okay, I want to be able to play the game with this kind of like I'm playing on a controller, like a PlayStation controller or something, like I did for for Kingdom Hearts three and stuff. I would love to be able to do that. Because then, like, this game, I would play this game all the time. No questions asked. But if I have to play this, like, with the little touch pads, that's going to be aggravating for me. I can already tell you that from the get-go. So I'm really hoping that they add controller support from the get-go. Okay. So with that being said, okay, and we, we just talked about the combat system, how it's likely going to play. Because uh, we did see, we saw snippets of, like, him, like, them using Meg. Yep, we saw, like, what looks like Fire Guy or something. Um, we saw, like... There's lightning. Um, there's water. I think that was water. I got some, some water uh, spell. Um, there was like a rock one earlier that threw me off. I, I don't think I've seen that one before. So of all sorts of varying abilities. Okay. With that being said, we're now transitioning into the likely monetization aspect of the game. Okay. And if you watch my reaction, Charlie, I kind of already discussed this a little bit. Um, <laughs> what's blatantly probably going to be there's already a few different aspects and probably how they're going to monetize this game okay the first one being obviously your character's outfits all right they did the exact same thing in union cross um I, and it, every single like new scene and stuff or like a new area we have it in completely different outfits so i have no doubt in my mind they're going to monetize the aesthetics the the outfits in this game 
With that being said, it looks like the main source of monetization, in my opinion, is going to actually be coming from the combat, which if you played Union Cross, again, should not be a surprise, okay? <laughs> That's literally how, how they monetize Union Cross. You have to pay for the medals, and the medals were what you used to fight. Okay, and it looks like that's basically going to be the same deal here for Missing Link. Um, so, like, let's see if I can see. So, if you notice, every time the character uses some sort of skill or ability or spell, um, it, there's, like, these little, like, trophy things. Where, where's my uh, marker? There's, like, these little trophy things that popped up behind the character each and every time um, that they do something. Okay, they... So, like, there's this one with Sora... Okay. There's this one with Donald right here. There's this one with Tara. Okay, and they're all in different like uh, poses and stuff too. There's Mickey. There's Aqua. A different version of Sora. Okay, so they're basically grabbing they're basically turning the metals. They're basically just reusing the metal system, essentially, is what it feels like. All right. Um, which, in my personal opinion, I'm not I'm not looking forward to that. That does not. It did not feel enjoyable in Union Cross, and it's probably not going to feel enjoyable in this game either. Okay. With that being said, though, there is a glimmer of hope uh, for this game because of the fact that this one has more or less the same what looks like the same type of combat system as Kingdom Hearts 3, there is hope that at least this time, you can get away with having non-optimal, I guess you could say builds. You can get away with having non-optimal builds if you are good enough at playing the game, okay? So basically, if you are a skilled enough player, you can get away with having suboptimal setups and that's that's my ray of hope that i have so far in terms of the gameplay monetization that you can have sub suboptimal stuff abilities and spells and whatnot but get away with it because you're good enough at the game okay sure it's gonna be harder of course than having the optimal setups but at least you can kind of get away with it um union cross kind of had that same aspect to a degree uh, but once, like every time the harder content came out, it was practically impossible. Uh, I'm fearful that this game's probably going to go down the same route at some point as well. But I guess, I guess we'll see about that. That remains to be seen. Now, another thing too that I am curious about is how they're going to handle Keyblades, because obviously Keyblades were one of, are one of the biggest things that you want to be able to switch and change from and customize and stuff when it comes to the Kingdom Hearts game. Um, obviously in <coughs> obviously in union cross we had multiple different keyblades that we would unlock when we traveled to different worlds um if we look at these uh clips again in a little bit slower motion we can actually see different keyblades so right now uh this ain't the best quality to be honest and it's i think it's at max quality yeah it's already at max quality and it's not the best i can't really tell what this keyblade is it looks as similar to a keyblade that i've seen before um but looking a little different because there's like this like weird like little pink bulb at the end here and it looks like a little spear pointy spear part at the end so it's a little different um there is i saw someone using like a master ericus keyblade at some point just rewind so here okay so this one there's a new there's another keyblade here this looks a little different this looks like one of the ones similar to kingdom hearts 3 i can't remember the names at the top of my head i haven't played kingdom hearts 3 in a good while so here we we have a different keyblade. This one's green this time. Okay. There's like this weird little like a uh, circular bulb here at the very end. Um there's clearly different keyblades. So obviously that points to the fact that we're we're probably going to have different keyblades. Now, my main concern is how we're going to obtain the keyblades, all right? Are we going to unlock them for free when we travel to new worlds and missions and stuff uh kind of like we did in Union Cross or or and this is probably the biggest one that I'm kind of scared about. Are they going to take a book out of some of their Final Fantasy games and they're going to monetize the weapons too? Imagine if you have to pay or grind to earn to unlock a new Keyblade. I really hope that in terms of abilities and 
equipment and whatnot, like uh, keyblades and stuff, um, that they at least maintain some sort of level of free, uh, satisfying free-to-play aspect that can keep people around where they don't feel like they're taking a being just they're just taking advantage of it's an ab abusive relationship because that's basically what en union cross ended up feeling to a lot of people and it's why a lot of people quit and why the game was also square square enix is one of uh square enix's top three worst performing mobile apps for them we'll we'll have to see um, but there are, it does look like there are multiple different keyblades going to be in the game, which is a good thing. Whether or not it's monetized or not, I guess we'll find out. All right, so that's pretty much it. So I kind of explained everything on my mind as to how I expect the gameplay to work out. Uh, one thing that I, I kind of want to clarify is that as of right now, this game essentially is looking like it's going to function almost exactly the same as union cross the only difference being is that it got a new coat of paint it got a graphic overhaul and that's kind of it oh and it has a new story <laughs> that's it that's that's what it's looking like so far that this game is probably gonna be same game different name different graphics different label that's what it's looking like so far. So we'll have to find out if that's what it ends up being at some point. Um, other than that, though, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you did, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell button. It really helps me out if you do so. Uh, go ahead and leave me your thoughts in the comment section down below about Missing Link. I would love to have some discussion about it. Maybe I'll make uh, further videos uh, talking about some of the points that you guys bring up. So... Without further ado, my name is Brian, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.